caterpillar and Alice looked at each other for some time in silence. At last, the caterpillar took the hookah out of its mouth and addressed her in a languid, sleepy voice. Who are you? said the caterpillar. This was not an encouraging opening for a conversation. Alice replied rather shyly. I, I hardly know, sir, just at present. At least, I know who I was when I got up this morning. But I think I must have been changed several times since then. What do you mean by that? said the caterpillar sternly. Explain yourself. I c can't explain myself, I'm afraid, sir. Because I'm not myself, you see? I don't see. I'm afraid I c can't put it more clearly. Alice replied very, very politely. For I c can't understand it myself, to begin with. And being so many different sizes in a day is very confusing. It isn't. Well, perhaps you haven't found it so yet. But when you have to turn into a chrysalis, you will someday, you know. And then after that, into a butterfly? I should think it'd feel a little queer, w won't you? Not a bit. Well, perhaps your feelings may be different. All I know is it would feel very queer to me. You, said the caterpillar contemptuously, who are you? Which brought them back again to the beginning of the conversation. Alice felt a little irritated at the caterpillars making such very short remarks, and she drew herself up and said very gravely, I think you ought to tell me who you are first. Why? Here was another puzzling question, and as Alice could not think of any good reason, and the caterpillar seemed to be in a very unpleasant state of mind, she turned away. Come back. The caterpillar called after her. I've something important to say. This sounded promising, certainly. Alice turned and came back again. Keep your temper. Is that all? Said Alice, swallowing down her anger as well as she could. No. Alice thought she might as well wait, as she had nothing else to do, and perhaps after all it might tell her something worth hearing. For some minutes it puffed away without speaking, but at last it unfolded its arms took the hookah out of its mouth again, and said, So you think you're changed, do you? I'm afraid I am, sir. I c can't remember things as I used. And I don't keep the same size for ten minutes together. Can't remember what things? Well, I've tried to say, How doth the little busy bee? But it all came out different. Alice replied in a very melancholy voice. Repeat, you are old, Father William. You are old, Father William, the young man said, and your hair has become very white, and yet you incessantly stand on your head. Do you think, at your age, it is right? Alice folded her hands and began. <clears throat> In my youth, Father William replied to his son, I fear it might enter the brain, but now that I am perfectly sure I have none, why do it again and again? You are old, said the youth, as I mentioned before, and yet grown almost uncommonly fat. Yet you turn a back somersault in at the door. Pray, what is the reason of that? In my youth, said the sage, as he shook his gray locks, I kept all my limbs very supple by the use of this ointment. When shielding the box, allow me to sell you a couple. You are old, said the youth, and your jaws are too weak for anything tougher than suet. Yet you finish the goose with the bones in the beak. Pray, how did you manage to do it? In my youth, said the father, I took to the law and argued each case with my wife. And the muscular strength which it gave me my jaw has lost me the rest of my life. You are old, said the youth, one hardly suppose that your eye was as steady as ever. Yet you balance an eel on the end of your nose. What made you so awfully clever? I have answered three questions, and that is enough. Said his father, don't give yourself airs. Do you think I can listen all day to such stuff? Be off or I'll kick you downstairs. That is not said right, said the caterpillar. Not quite right, I'm afraid, said Alice timidly. Some of the words have gotten altered. It is wrong from beginning to end, said the caterpillar decidedly. And there was silence for some minutes. The caterpillar was the first to speak. What size do you want to be? Oh, well, I'm not particular to size. Alice hastily replied. Only one doesn't like changing so often, you know? 
I don't know. Alice said nothing. She had never been so much contradicted in all her life before, and she felt that she was losing her temper. Are you content now? Well, I should like to be a little larger, sir, if you wouldn't mind. Three inches is such a wretched height to be. It is a very good height indeed, said the caterpillar angrily, rearing itself upright as it spoke. I am exactly, exactly three, inches three inches high. high. Oh, but I'm not used to it, pleaded poor Alice in a piteous tone. And she thought to herself, I, I wish the, the creatures wouldn't be so easily, easily offended. offended. You'll get used to it in time, said the caterpillar, and it put the hookah into its mouth and began smoking again. This time, Alice waited patiently until it chose to speak again. In a minute or two, the caterpillar took the hookah out of its mouth and yawned once or twice and shook itself. Then it got down off the mushroom and crawled away into the grass merely remarking as it went. One side will make you grow taller, and the other side will make you grow shorter. One side of what? The other side of what? Thought Alice to herself. Of the mushroom, of course said the caterpillar, just as if she had asked it aloud, and in another moment it was out of sight. Alice remained looking thoughtfully at the mushroom for a minute, trying to make out which were the two sides of it, and as it was perfectly round, she found this a very difficult question. However, at last she stretched her arm, round it as far as they would go, and broke off a bit of the edge with each hand. <laughs> Now which is which? She said to herself, and nibbled a little of the right hand bit to try the effect. The next moment she felt a violent blow underneath her chin. It had struck her foot. She was a good deal frightened by this very sudden change, but she felt that there was no time to be lost as she was sinking rapidly, so she set to work at once to eat some of the other bit. Her chin was pressed so closely against her foot that there was hardly room to open her mouth. But she did it at last, and managed to swallow a morsel of the left-hand bit. 